uh, by February, we'll have gone to 100 million doses per month. We want to handle India as a priority first. Every four to five months, we hope to launch a new vaccine. plans of the next few months, say from now to June? Well, we're planning to make about 100 million doses on a monthly basis. At the moment, we are at a 50 to 60 million dose capacity on a monthly basis as an output. Uh, by February, we'll have gone to 100 million doses per month. So um, right now I've dedicated two facilities. I'll dedicate another two facilities by January, February, which are getting validated. So that's how we'll uh, double our monthly output both to India and to COVAX. So that's the plan. What's your agreement with the government of India? Uh, how many doses are you providing uh, for, of the, both the Oxford vaccine as well as Minimax? Well, it's ongoing at the moment, so I won't comment, but it they want a few hundred million doses by July. So they want three to 400 million doses by July. I don't know if they'll take all of that from Serum Institute. Uh, I think they'll have to decide or comment on that. But we're gearing up certainly to give and offer that kind of volume to India and still have a few hundred million uh, to offer to COVAX also by July, uh, August of next year. Which are the other countries which have pre-ordered with you? Because I believe Bangladesh is interested. We've got Bangladesh. Uh, we're in talks with maybe even Nepal um, and some other countries in Africa. Um, but we haven't really signed and committed anything else beyond Bangladesh at the moment because, you know, COVAX itself is handling all of Africa and that's a population of 2 billion. So we don't really want to right now partner with many other countries and have bilaterals because we won't have enough uh, stock to uh, to give. You know, we'll be then committing more than what we can supply. So we don't want to do that. We want to handle India as a priority first and manage Africa as well at the same time. And then after that, we can help out, you know, as many other countries that uh, may come forward. We have tie-ups with four other companies. Which are the other promising vaccines and what are your plans for them? So um, the reason why we tied up with the others was uh, a two-pronged approach. You know, um, we wanted also to have in our basket live attenuated uh, virus vaccines because those traditionally can manage with just one dose instead of two doses, which is what all these vaccines need. And also will give you a very long term, strong, powerful protection. If you look at measles, because it's a live attenuated vaccine, it gives you that long term, lifelong immunity once you take uh, two shots uh, or even one shot when you're a baby. So that's why we went ahead with Codagenics, which is a reverse codon and way of, you know, um, removing the harmful properties of a virus. And it just basically is a way of attenuating the virus. And then got uh, University of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, which is, you know, using our measles uh, vaccine with the COVID protein on it. So it'll become a combination vaccine of COVID and measles. And then you've got uh, Novavax, which you know everything about. It's a spike protein and um, uh, 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 Oxford. So that's covering up all the five that uh, we have right now. And every four to five months, we hope to launch a new vaccine. You know, so if we're talking about January, uh, uh, for the Oxford one, every quarter after that, we're hoping to launch another one after that, you know, uh, with Scodogenics probably being coming uh, coming in at the end of 2021. If two or three work very well, so maybe we might not scale up all the others because there might not be any need to. Um, and of course, you've got other Indian vaccine manufacturers also who will have some vaccines in the next six months. So I think India certainly is going to have more than enough supply of vaccines. Um, how much India will start to help other countries is yet to be decided because we don't know how much supply the other countries will be able to produce and whether they'll take the Chinese and Russian vaccines as well. That's yet to be seen. A lot of people knocking at your door saying, please, please give me some vaccines. I'm talking about governments, of course. So do you have a lot of that? Is it difficult saying no? The government has, has, has re uh, reached out to us. Um, and of course, we've had to give the same answer that, you know, we have to look at supplying our nation, which has got a huge population. And then, you know, uh, we'll see which countries we can then help out uh, on priority and um, uh, see where the most vulnerable populations are and the need is. And then ethically, as soon as we can supply to them, uh, that's the plan. So, you know, we'll all have to wait for a little while.